Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more Gwent. So, this week we're going to be taking into ranked one of my lesser powerful decks, but it's still quite fun. I call it Cross Country Dwarves. So, it is a Brotherhood deck that focuses around dwarves and movement synergies. If you want to check out the deck tech to get the full breakdown of the deck, then be sure to do so. It's probably a separate video, and if you've already hit that bell icon right next to the subscription button, you should have a notification for it as well. So this isn't my best deck, and if you want to find out why I'm not so happy with it, then be sure to go check out that, and that'll give you all of the details. Alright guys, uh, I'll see you in the matches. Not thy cellmate tower. Nothing like a dwarf to get you to a tight spot. Alright, we're against Consume Monsters. Which is interesting. We've got Blue Mountain Commando, so we can thin out our deck a little bit. We've got some resilience here. And I'm going to get rid of you. Get rid of you. Cleaver. Uh, mm, don't really like Cleaver there. More Mahakam Defenders. Alright, well. We can get all three of them stacked on the front row, I guess. And immune boost them. That might be a thing. I think both of us are trying to win this first round. Um, he's usually got one carryover with a Katakan, and I'll be having three. So we'll see what happens here, really, shan't we? I get to move them off of the row as well, which can help a little bit later down the line. It's our opponent's turn. He's going to lead off with Selino Harpies, or Kalino Harpies, whatever they're called. Okay. Well, I'm just going to... Hmm... Just start Death with us all. thinning out our deck a little bit, getting our mountain commandos gone. And he's going to begin the consume. Okay. Strengthen all the other bronze and silver dwarves in your deck, hand and on your side of the board by one. So we don't have to play him just yet. But he's there just in case. So let's just go with our premium Mahakam defender. Let him truly know what we're doing. So we're going for a kind of resilience strategy. He could of course have a fiend to lock, which would be upsetting. Any kind of lock is upsetting for us because we don't actually have adrenaline rush in our hand right now. But come. Uh, thanks to the Blue Mount Commandos you will being out of our it. deck, I can actually now Avalak. And see now. Okay, well. I'm not sure who's going to win this first round, but we're going to make every effort to make sure it's us. Yeah, I was really hoping for our adrenaline rush there. That would have been lovely. Goes with another Rakus Behemoth. So one thing we can be certain about is he's not running Gigni or anything of that sort. Well, he might be running Gigni, never mind. He's not running Scorch, because Vran Warriors essentially uh, usually go over the power limit of anybody else. So there is that. Hmm. We'll play you now because you actually get boosted based on our future plays. Everything in our hand is effectively a dwarf for the most part, so. You can get the boosts there. You've got quite the commanding lead. Doesn't mean we can't get ahead though, nonetheless. Alright, uh, let's go with... Hmm. Let's get Dennis down. Let's ah, boost everything. Everything gets strengthened. And our dude at the bottom here, Yarpen, he gets a nice little boost for playing a dwarf as well. The upside for us as well is even if he passes, we can go down on cards because we're actually carrying over quite a fair bit of power 
if we play maybe Mahakam Defender, Mahakam Defender, and then Immune Boost to triple boost them all, that kind of thing. He's clearly setting up for a Grave Hag here, though. So that is a thing that we have to worry ourselves about just a little bit. Uh, let's just go with... Hmm. What do we want to go with? I guess we'll just play now. Another Defender. Keep boosting while he keeps consuming. Hmm. Just got the harpies in there at the moment. Forty-seven to seventy-one is quite the lead, but we haven't actually really played most of our power. We've just played most of our carryover. So, we're going to see how well that goes for us. Goes with a water hag for a lasser out in the front row, I'm guessing. It might be the mid row. Nah, he's going front. That's fair enough. Well, third defender. This is very much an all-in strategy, so if we do lose our front row here, then uh, we'll be really sad. Um, <laughs> so, there is that. So the next play that we want to make is essentially our immune boost. If he doesn't play a lacerate here and get rid of our Mahakam defenders. If he does, then maybe we'll just use the guard to put a third onto the row and then immune boost them. Maximum point value there. Yeah, this isn't exactly the best deck in the world. Oh, he's going to give up on his consume there. Looks like he's ready to pass the round then. It's not exactly the best deck in the world, but uh, it is playing against one of the best ones. Certainly one of the most popular ones. Monsters are around quite a lot recently. Okay, so let's spawn our leader and look for Never our silvers. Sport. Uh, the oh, it could be Barkley Els, but I kind of really want Sheldon because he boosts himself and he'll move everything. On this row as well, and they get boosts, so. Takes us to 78. And then we can just Mahakam guard. And move you. Ah, oh, boost you, sorry. Should Ah, that was a misplay. I should have boosted one of the resilient ones. Oh well. Hopefully that one come back to bite us. I was kind of on a little bit of a um, movement train of thought there. Mardrum is awesome. Mardrum gets rid of the Ekimara altogether. Um, I don't think you are as powerful as maybe I hope you are, so I'm just going to get rid of you. And we need to win this round, so we're all in right now. Let's move you. We'll keep hold of this Mardrome until the very last, because if he does want to go for an Ekimara, maybe if he is winning the round, then we'll Mardrome that and get rid of it at a moment's notice. The downside is, though, they can unseen Elder it and secure those points, so maybe we want a Mad Rome sooner rather than later. Oh, he gets his Water Hag. Hmm. 
Well, we can trick the water hag. Because that was about 24 points he was going to get there. 23. 20, yeah, 22 points that he was going to get from that. So, that was a fairly decent point. Right there. I shall save your death. Oh dear, succubus. Well, we can move. We can move Yarpen off of the row. So I think we'll do that. We must stick together. Now succubus hits nothing. So he's effectively just gave us, given us five points there. Almost certain the next move that we're going to make is going to be to Mardrome that Ekimara, uh, the cat can, and get it off the board. Yeah, Ekimara, yeah, yeah, sorry. A fool's Play the top gold card and the top silver card. Ooh. Katakan to consume our nine pointer, I guess. I guess for the eight pointer. Hmm. Interesting. Well, spores on the Ekimara banishes it. And we may very well have won here. We'll have to see. Ooh. Kieran. Consuming a Frightener for 10 points extra on top of the 8 that he gets. And we have only one last play to make. The thing, all right. And we will do it on... You. See if you can make up those points. 9 points. He gets to consume for 13 and then help you? an extra 10 there. He's only boosting another 2 on top of that though because I don't think these guys get replaced as he consumes them. No, they don't. So that's 80 to 67. <laughs> Fantastic. And that's how we drew it up. All right, let's go for another game. GG, sir. GG. Ooh, scraps. Ooh, experience. Ooh, ranking points. All right, let's go to a new game. We've hammered enough. Let's get to work. All right, so we've got ourselves a Blue Mountain Commando. We've got a little bit of carryover and a bit of movement as well for our commandos. Um, I actually do a fair bit with uh, so we'll keep you around, I guess. I don't really want to commit entirely to one creature. We're going against monsters weather as well by the looks of things so maybe actually boosting all onto one unit's not gonna be too bad although I don't want to stack onto one single row so let's try and oh god go again oh gotta get rid of that and we get an immune boost uh immune boost isn't too bad actually um because it gives us armor which protects against a little bit of weather Opponent goes straight off with an Earth Elemental, which can spawn some lesser elementals. Okay. So, I guess what we will do is we will move our Mountain Commandos Death to the back row cool. and see if our opponent wants to stick some weather on that, because that's actually our least used row. So we can use Sheldon to move everything off of that row, essentially. Okay, clean our harpies. Well, we're going to keep these guys around for now. We've got no reason to move them just yet. Um, let's go with... Let's stick an Avalak down. We'll see it. Let's draw some cards. 
Maybe our opponent doesn't want to draw cards and draw into Arrakis or things like that. Who knows? Probably aren't any Arrakis in there, let's be honest. But there will be weather cards and things like that that maybe he doesn't want to find. Just going to go and stick that on those uh, those old eggs. That's interesting of you. Okay. Well, let's just strengthen all of the units in our hand and deck. And stay a little bit ahead of him. I'm not getting the weather aspect of his deck right now, <laughs> judging by our board being completely clear of it. Hmm. So he does have a fair bit of carryover. He's got four points there and then another six points here as well. So ten points he's carrying over. We can carry over more than that easily if we want to. And use it to win this round. Yeah, that's another thing as well. The Foglets was something that we wanted to draw him into. Really good that we're seeing those guys now. Because he wants to play Fog and get all three out at the same time, but if we drew them into his hand, then he doesn't actually thin them out of his deck. So, that's a nice play for us. I like it. I like it a lot. Right, well, we're going to go with... Let's stick a Mahakam Defender down. What you got? He fogs the row and gets his foglets out of his deck. So, fog specifically deals damage to the highest unit. Only one of them as well, right? Yeah, just a single unit. So we can move our Mahakam defenders off the front row if we want to. We don't really have any clear weather right now. We can go fetch the clear weather with Ruva Hoog, but I don't know if we want to do that just yet. So I think we'll just stack on two of the front row. Hope that the fog hits this and then we'll immune boost. Ooh, he goes with Old Spear Tip Asleep. For the start of the turn, there are two or fewer units on the opposite row fall asleep. As if at the start of your turn, there are three or more units on the row, wake him up, and then he boosts all adjacent units by one. Mm. So what you're saying is, I should Sheldon them off of the front row. So that there's only one unit. You're one damn and then all the spear tips, just a five strength gold. Would have preferred to use him on the Blue Mountain Commandos because they do get a boost, but. Ah. Frightener moves. Three units onto the front row, so we can actually move it off of the front row. Let's move uh, they use tire our defender and then boost. Disarming spear tip again. Caranthia. Okay. Removes the fog though, so he gets rid of his foglets. He's going to have to reapply that. So we can. Well, we can no longer move our units. 
As far as I'm aware, I don't think we've got any more bronze, uh, uh, silver moving units. So let's just immune boost these guys. He flips and he deals damage and the armor keeps them safe. And more harpies. Okay, so we can lock the Earth Elemental and keep those points off there as well. So he needs to get rid of three units on our front row in order to flip it back and boost again. Which I don't think he's going to be able to do. We'll keep Ruverhoog around for the clear weather. Just going to boost. Uh, boost you by four. He's going to be able to take out Dennis. That's fine. He's not hitting any of our resilient units. Not right now, anyway. And even if he does have something like Mardrome, um, he can only hit one of them. So we want to essentially carry over that properly. We can deal four to a unit with Cisenthesis. And also boost by one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's 15 strength and he deals th uh, four to something as well. Which I mean that will win us the round pretty much on the spot. What a... But let's That's not do that just yet. Let's just keep boosting our defenders. He's going to go for the fog on the back row. So I think now's a good time for us to clear the weather. Make a dwarf to get to a tight spot. Let's get Eda. The time of the white frost and white light. Clear skies. Get rid of the foglets. Pretty much undo his plans. So Synthesis now does five damage as well because she's also an elf. So that's something. <laughs> Plays his crones. That is something I really wanted to see. Alright, well, we're just going to play this entirely out. We're going to get rid of the carry over there. It's four points gone. Commander's Horn. So we're a little bit behind, but I think the census can actually cover that more than enough. Boost up to 17, and then we'll point some damage at the Brewess. 94 to his 111. Even if he wins, we're carrying over a fair bit. So it's whether or not he wants to play out that card and win this round, if he can. Or just pass and hold it for the next round. I'm guessing he's going to pass. I'm certainly doing some math right now. He's 18 points with that card. Yeah. So we take the first round. Keep our resilient Mahakam defenders on the front row. 29 to his 16. Madrum is okay, I guess. And we can move a unit, which is fine. Helps with something. Yeah, I think... I don't know if Mardrum's actually going to be good enough here. We'll get rid of it. There's more points on the board, I think, is a lot better. So, let's move ah, they used you time. off of that row heard. to 39.
Lightning Bolt Potion takes him to 28, and then we boost. Second, all right. Boost you. Spread our damage out. 28 to 49. Let's see if his last two cards can do it. I'm guessing one of them's probably going to be Weather, which won't do it. If it's Fog, he gets his Foglets for, what is it, 9 points? Are they 3 point each? Oh. Woodland Spirit generates the Fog. They're actually 2 points each. 42 to our 48. It's actually going to be incredibly close. We're actually at 46. Yeah, he wins. Ah, oh, that sucks. Lightning Bolt Potion. Gives him the round. And it's just down to top decks now. That won't do it. We need a redraw. And that won't do it either. Oh my god. Of all the cards, we get the one that actually does nothing. Hopefully our opponent has the same thing. And we go for a draw. No. Thanks. You're welcome. Ah, that really sucks. We could have beaten that six-pointer as well. There's plenty of cards in our deck that would have done it. Ah, well. GG. Can't win them all. Alright, guys. That is gonna do it for today's episode. So if you did enjoy the look of the deck, then leave a like and subscribe. And there'll be some more videos coming out tomorrow for Gwent as well. And yeah, if you hit that little bell icon, you'll get notifications when they go live. I do hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.